Hey there, everybody. It's Tyler at Tapper. So happy to be with you here today, and we're going to be talking about some polyurethane front control arm bushings for a 335XI. The front suspension of the all-wheel drive is a little bit different than the front-wheel drive. You've got a bunch of different options for the front-wheel drive. With the all-wheel drive, the only front control arm bushings I found were these strong flex ones, and uh, they take a little bit to get there. I think it took almost uh, three weeks for them to arrive over from Europe, but. It's the only option I could find, and I was pretty happy with them overall. If you're wanting a little bit more compliant of a bushing, they do offer a red-colored one that's a little bit softer than this one, but I went with the yellow. Now, they have a tool that you can rent to get these bushings out with an impact gun or a socket wrench. I did not use that because I have a press. Um, I've heard that those work pretty well online with some other people that have done them, but, you know, your mileage may vary. I have the press, so I'm going to use it. These are the other tools you're going to need. You don't really need a whole lot to get the control arms off, and if you don't want to mess with them, you can just always take those off and bring these to a shop and have them press them in. I bet it would cost 50 or 60 bucks to have them do that if you actually brought it into the shop there. My impressions of these bushings aren't going to be from a working stock bushing to the polyurethane ones. Uh, I ended up doing these because I was starting to notice that I had a lot of understeer going around corners. It just really felt like the front end was loose. Um, if you want to test to see if these are bad, you can basically put a bunch of pressure on your front tire with your foot and just kind of kick it in and see if it moves back and forward a lot in the wheel well. And I could actually see a little bit of movement front to back on mine. And you could really feel that in driving. First thing you're going to have to do to gain access to it is to get your wheel off. Always remember to use some anti seize on the back of your wheel, otherwise they will get stuck onto your car like this one did. The bolts are pretty easy to gain access to. You don't have to take off the whole inner wheel well liner. There's just a little access cover here. You're going to use, there's going to be two different fasteners on here. There's going to be those screws that go in and then there's going to be a bolt on the bottom. Uh, you take that off and then you can get the first view of the bushing that we're looking at. So here's what the bushing looks like, and here's what the bushing looks like with too much movement in it when it's torn. You can see it's wiggling all around there. Um, there's going to be some movement in it just because it's, it's a rubber piece that's made to move and flex, but if it's moving this much when you're pushing on it, it's probably shot. Sorry for the shaky footage here. This is a 24 millimeter nut that you're going to have to get off, and impact takes it off pretty quick. Uh, you're going to need an impact to get it back on, or you're going to need to use that uh, star key in the head of it to tighten it back down later. So it turns out I drastically underappreciated how much force I was going to have to put into breaking this loose. I was afraid of bending the control arm or damaging it somehow, but I really had to put a lot of force into it, so don't be afraid to really whack on it. The other thing I eventually did is I put a jack under part of there so that it wouldn't be moving the entire assembly up and down. You can kind of see where I placed it there when I finally got it off. Tap it, tap, tap, tap. Once the front part's been disconnected, I went on over to the back. You're going to need a couple of 18 millimeters for both sides of it. And then just go ahead and remove the bolt. The bolt is going to be a little bit tight when you end up pulling it out, but uh, use a little persuasion, you'll get it. Again, this is not what they're supposed to look like. <laughs> you can see it's completely torn out of the center part there. Um, just moving way too much, and I'm honestly surprised it was working as well as it was. So you always go to school on the first part, and then after you do it the first time, you figure it out a little bit better for the other side. This first side did take a lot longer than the second side, probably three times as long so I was figuring out which parts I needed to use to press it out and how to hold everything in the press everything like that um, I ended up using too small of a uh, collet in there to try and press it out I pressed the rubber out instead of the metal part out uh, for demonstration purposes so everybody could see what it looked like on the inside of course uh, but on the second side I'll kind of show you how to do it better at this point I realize what I'm doing I flip it over and I figure I'll at least get that metal part pushed down as far as I can flush with the top of it with these uh, arbor plates. Yeah. 
They're always a little bit pucker inducing when it finally does decide to go. Now that I have it even with the top, I moved that piece over so it was just sitting on one side of it. That way it's actually pushing on the metal. Um, I'm going to have to flip it over to the other side once here, but this actually worked pretty well to get it out. Um, on the other one where I didn't push the rubber out first, it was a lot easier because it had a little bit of a lip to rest on. Comparing the way these two bushings work is a little bit differently. On the stock ones, you can see there's that void in there. They're built to just kind of flex around inside of that metal cage with the rubber. With the urethane ones, what happens is you push them in there and that metal sleeve that goes in the middle is actually going to rotate to take up the movement. Since you have that rotation, you do have to lubricate everything really well uh, or you have the potential for some squeaks in your suspension. So that's what you're using the supplied grease for. I have heard that if you run out of this for any reason, you can just use regular copper anti-seize in the place of it that should work pretty well. So I had another little kind of puckering moment happen here. The internet said just push them in and those lips will go all the way through. Uh, it didn't really seem like it would and then you can see it pops out of the center, but I decided to just keep on going and see what happened and eventually it went through. So. Just stick something flat on the top so you don't mar it and make sure they have a place to go through on the bottom and they should pop in perfectly. So after that is popped in there, it is time to put the metal sleeve in the center. The sleeve is the part that the bolt is going to go through and ride in. Now there are a bunch of grooves in there set out in a mesh that you need to pack full of this grease. Uh, so just make sure to get it in there all the way through and really well packed in. I was kind of surprised how much force it actually took to get in the center there. That's uh, made to be that way. I'm sure it needs to be tight, but just go ahead and whack it in there with a the hammer so it's flush and clean off the ends of it. With everything assembled, you can go ahead and put it back in. It's just the reverse of taking it out, obviously. There's a little bit of a difference if you're using these poly control arm bushings as opposed to a stock control arm bushing. With a poly control arm bushing, you can tighten it down with that arm in any position you want because that metal sleeve is going to rotate inside there. With a stock one, it's going to flex. So if you tighten it down when the control arm is pushed down, when you put it back up and put load on the suspension, that rubber bushing is already going to be torqued so as the suspension moves it's going to over torque it and you'll have an early failure and it'll tear so make sure to put it up and tighten it up before you tighten it down this next part is a great place to have an impact wrench if you don't uh, you can again use that star key in the center there but otherwise what will happen is this ball joint's just going to spin and uh, it won't tighten down uh, this is a good time to replace that ball joint too if you need to after that, the only thing left on this side is to put that access cover back on and again, just the same as removal, just get those screws back in there and tighten them down and you are done. While I'm showing you how I press the second bushings out and put the new ones in, again, learning how to do it a little bit better the second time through, I just kind of wanted to go through my impressions of these bushings and what I liked and didn't like about them. As far as handling, it was really a night and day difference. I haven't ever done anything that was this inexpensive. It was 50 bucks to get the bushings that made this big of a difference. The understeer was completely gone. Um, I don't know how much of that was due to them being just broken and how much better it would be over stock, but over the broken ones, it was quite an amazing improvement on them. Uh, now, the one thing that everybody is probably wanting to know is, did these end up squeaking? Polyurethane bushings are a little bit notorious for developing squeaks over time. I didn't publish this video, one, because I'm lazy, and two, because I wanted to see uh, how, they, how they aged. Uh, I actually don't have the car anymore, but before I sold the car, they did develop a squeak, and it was probably about, oh, maybe nine months to a year into having them on the car. Uh, I'm still friends with the owner that has them, has it now, and he says the squeak has gone away, so maybe a little bit of schmoo went in there. Um, but you wouldn't have to take these all the way off to re-lubricate them. You just have to take that one bolt out, drop them down, pop the metal sleeve out, re-lubricate them, and put them back in. So if you're looking for something completely silent, these might not be for you. Uh, they really did have a huge difference in the feel of the car, though, so I can recommend them that way. 
And with that, I wanted to thank you guys for taking the time to watch my video. I really appreciate it. If you like this, uh, please like, please subscribe, and I will see you guys next time.